So how about that trigger fish? He was nuts. He was wanting a piece of you. He wanted me back. Hey people of the interwebs, it is Q bringing you another scuba diving adventure and today's scuba dive involves the kayaks. So we're going to gear up, load up the kayaks and head off in search of adventure. When the wind is blowing from the north, Kings Beach is quite well protected, so the surface conditions were perfect for a kayak dive. The first order of business when you hit the deck on any kayak dive is to make sure that the anchor is secure. We dropped into 7.4 meters of water and the temperature was a beautiful 29 degrees Celsius. We picked a heading of 240 and set off to see what we could find. After three or four minutes on that heading, I was beginning to think that we dropped anchor in the wrong spot. There was nothing but desert and occasionally some piles of desert poo. Gordon and I gave it a couple of more minutes and then we turned around and headed back to the anchor. The great thing about kayak diving is that once you're at the anchor, it's your central point and you just choose a compass heading, head off in whatever direction you choose and see what you can find. Our second heading provided a bit more to see, but it was obvious that this dive was going to be all about the small things. For some strange reason, all of the sea stars we spotted had a missing leg and were in the process of regrowing them. As we gently cruised around this dive spot, it didn't take too long before my favourite fish, the whiptails, discovered our presence and then provided us an escort for the rest of the dive. They were of course hoping to gather some food morsels once we stirred up a bit of sediment. I've recently been asked to make sure I include any nudibranchs that we spot, so for the nudibranch lovers, here's the three species that we spotted on this dive. Whenever I am diving, one of the little games I play in my head is to see how close I can get to the Christmas tree worms before they pop themselves back into their hole. And on this one, I think I'm the winner. So many of the marine creatures are brilliantly camouflaged, and here I do a quick double take as I spot something out of the corner of my eye. Right next to the small starfish is a triggerfish and they can be quite defensive and territorial if they're guarding eggs. Luckily, I think this one was just curious more than anything else.
If ever you do come across an aggressive trigger fish, the thing to remember is that their territory extends in a cone from the nest towards the surface, so swimming upwards can actually put you further into the fish's territory. It's best to swim away horizontally from the nest, and that way the trigger fish will leave you alone a lot quicker. My dive buddy Gordon indicated that he was low on air and we also figured that we'd pretty much seen everything that we wanted to on this dive site so we did the short swim back to the anchor and began our ascent. Our total dive time was 46 minutes, the max depth was 8.4 meters, the water temperature was 29 degrees celsius and the visibility was around about the 7 meter mark. So how about that trigger fish? He was nuts. He was wanting a piece of you. Dude. He wanted me bad. <laughs> You're a bad patch of dirt. Yeah. Get out of town. It's a big ocean. Find your own patch. <laughs> so another great day in southeast Queensland and another great scuba dive off the kayaks. I think we were around about 400 meters offshore and we had about seven and a half meters of visibility. The star of the show has got to be the trigger fish who wouldn't leave the camera alone. And don't forget, if you enjoyed today's scuba diving adventure with Q, subscribe to the YouTube channel to see a new video out every Saturday at 12.30. That's Australian Eastern Standard Time. And of course, if you've got any comments, leave them down below. As soon as I see those, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and take it easy. It's showtime.